Hi, I'm Pamela and I brew pretty short hairs here in Perth, Western Australia. I have a passion for cat breeding and I'd love to share my experience and knowledge with you. This channel is designed for people who are new to the, breed, to the cat breeding hobby, but if you've been breeding for a little while, stick around as you'll probably pick up a tip or two. Now today I wanted to talk to you about something that happened on the weekend and I thought I should take a video of this right now because I'm really, really hoping it doesn't happen again anytime soon. But it's something that you should know about if you're breeding cats. Now this happened at a cat show. I went to a cat show on the weekend. My cats did really well. My Herbert got a supreme in show, so I'm very, very proud of him. But at the show, there was an incident and the incident was that I was stewarding for a judge and I did get bitten. So I got bitten by a cat, I got bitten by an entire male, by a um, stud cat, and I got bitten quite badly. Now I want to say up front, I am held no malice towards the cat at all or the owner, I have no problem with that. It was just something that happened and I know why it happened and I know how it happened and it just happened. So I'm not upset in any way, shape or form with the person who owned the cat and I'm not upset with the cat. I, it actually is a cat that I'm really super familiar with and he actually is the father of some of my kittens. So I can't, I, I have no problem. I've had him here at my house. I have handled this cat, you know, many times before. But what happened was um, something that you need to know about if you own a stud cat. And I know people seem to be really interested when I talk about stud cats and I do have several of my own and I've had a lot over the years that I've been breeding and have a lot of experience with them. So one of the things that I notice is that you guys are really interested in stud cats, which is great because there's something that you don't, there's not a lot of information out there available for you. So I'm happy to share. Now this boy is an entire male and he is about, I think he's about three or four years old and he came out um, to be judged. And while we were judging him, the first thing he um, started to do was he started to roll over. So he started to sort of roll over, you know, and he wanted to be upside down on the table. And that is a classic sign that you would get from, if you get that from an entire male cat, if an entire male cat is behaving like that when you're patting him, when you're giving him attention, when you're giving him infection, when you're trying to do something with him, that's a bit of a red flag. And what that generally means is that he's a little bit too excited, if you know what I mean. Um, he's a little bit um, stimulated. So that will happen. And sometimes they might do it if you walk into their pen, they might do it around your feet. Um, but basically it's, it's a sign that they're a little bit excited. And he did do this and then we did sort of, I, we, the judge moved him back into position and judged him a little bit more and moved him back into position and judged him a little bit more. And then I stepped in, told him um, while she was trying to have a better look at him. And he did it again. He did a little bit of a flipsy roll on me. And then he did a bunny kick. Um, you know how your cats and kittens will sort of kick at each other. They'll kick at each other with their back legs. So he did that to me. And that was, that was, a very big red flag when a boy cat does that to you it seems really cute because all of your cats will do it at some stage and they'll do it when they're play fighting and they'll do it when they're being cutesy with you and your kittens will do it and when any other cats doing it it's fine because generally you'll notice that it ends with a bite it ends with a bite like a chomp but it's not a bad one it's just like a cute chompy chomp because those cats, um, kittens and desex cats, they don't ha they have some natural instinct to do it, but they don't have the real, um, they don't know why they're doing it. They don't have a purpose behind it. They're just doing it because it's a natural instinct for them. A stud cat, he has all the hormones he needs to make him, that's a serious thing for him. So when um, they do that, when you get the bunny kicking and the rolling going on, you really need to be careful because the next thing that happens is what happened to me is that he just turned and, and, and chomped. It wasn't attacking. He wasn't throwing himself at me or anything like that. He just rolled around, kicked me a few times um, in the arm and then chomped on my hand. And I didn't even think it was that bad when it happened. I thought, oh no, he hasn't broken the skin. We're all good. He's just chomped me and he's left a couple of dents in my hand. No problem. So his owner was luckily right there and was able to grab him and safely take him back to his show cage. And there was no, there was no meowing, there was no cat screaming at me, there was no um, drama. It was actually really quite, um, you know, calm the way it actually happened, except that I 
been bitten. <laughs> and it turned out that when I took my hand away from, you know, took my hand away to look, it was covered in blood because I had been badly bitten. Um, so the first thing that you need to do when this happens, because it happened to me at a show and it happened to me with somebody else's cat, but it will happen to, it could absolutely happen to you with your own cat. And it has happened, it has never happened to me with one of my own cats, but it has happened to my partner, Damien. One of our stud cats bit him when he wanted, um, another cat was walking past his pen and got him all rolled up and he, he bit Damien. When Damien went to grab him to move him away, he bit Damien. So it was a bite from a stud cat. Now a bite from a stud cat, a bite from a cat in general is bad. Cats have more bacteria than almost, I think than any other breed of animal. I don't know if the only thing worse than them is being bitten by a person. That's what I've been told. You don't want to be bitten by a person. But um, if you get bitten by a cat, it's really bad and you do need to do something about it straight away. Now, if you get bitten by a stud cat, it's probably twice as bad. The reason is stud cats use their bite as a defense mechanism. And a stud cat will, when a stud cat fights, when an entire male cat, a cat with testicles, bites with another cat, they will use their bite as a weapon. And they will bite the other cat and then the other cat will go away. And then infection will set in and that can actually kill the other cat. Um, often you have, you know, pets that live outside. I mean, I 100% don't believe in cats being outside at all for so many different reasons. But one of the reasons is they will fight with other cats and all it takes is for the other cat to bite it. And suddenly you've got a big infected wound, which is going to cost you a fortune and put your cat's life at risk. So that's their defense mechanism to take out the competition. They bite them with their gross bacteria filled teeth. So when you get bitten by a stud cat, whether it's your own cat or someone else's cat, you need to take it extra seriously because of the amount of bacteria that's going to be in there. It's a little bit, it's even more so than a normal cat bite. Um, and I do have antibiotics at home. I have them here um, if I need them. I also have a script that I've had um, that I check to make sure it's not expired. I have a script there if I need it. And I make sure that I've got the antibiotics on hand. But at a cat show, obviously, you can't. But luckily, we have um, a very wonderful um, lady that comes to our show. She's an exhibitor and she's a um, doctor and she brings her script pad with her and I was able to get antibiotics. So I didn't get the antibiotics until I left the show in the evening. And um, I had my first dose last night and then I've had some more this morning. Now, when I left the show, my hand was, my hand had started off pretty normal, but by the end of the show, it was red hot, had a great big swollen area, and I couldn't actually, it was quite difficult to drive home. I had trouble, my car's got one of those push button starts, and I actually had trouble pushing the button to start my car. But I got home, it was fine. Uh, and luckily, everybody at the show was so wonderful. All of my friends, especially my British short hair friends, they all came and helped me pack up my cages and put my cats in for me and, you know, carried stuff for me. So thank you so much to all of them for helping. When I got home, my hand was really bad and I took the antibiotics and I took some painkillers as well. And one of the things you should do is if it's red and sore and swollen, you should draw a line around where it's red so that you can see whether or not it's getting worse because it's hard to remember. You can also take a photo, but drawing a line around it is a really good idea. So last night I drew a um, Sharpie texture line around my hand and uh, I think I flashed it up on just before you might've seen that I had a little circle there. And then this afternoon I've drawn another circle because it has gone outside of that line. Uh, I've spoken to my doctor friend and the antibiotics do take about 40 hours to kick, 48 hours to kick in. Um, the one that you need to get is um, amoxicillin and clav. Um, if you go, if you if you are in an area where you can't get to a doctor, or you can't get an appointment, because sometimes it's hard to get an appointment. What I recommend you say, and I've said this before when this has happened to us before, is you let them know, I am I have been bitten by a cat, and I need antibiotics, because they will see you. They will see you because they know that that's actually quite a um, something they need to get out in front of and they need to do it fast. Don't leave it. Don't say, oh, I'll just see how it goes until tomorrow because tomorrow your hand might be swollen up like a balloon and you could end up in hospital with blood poisoning. And if you end up in hospital with blood poisoning, then you've got to have the, you know, antibiotics that go in your arm and it can get even worse and then you can have problems and you have to have the line put in and, yeah, it can. Yeah, I know people that have had um, 
bites that have been around the joints on their hand and then that can get infected a lot worse and you can end up with future problems. It can be a whole big deal. So please, if you get bitten, go to the doctors, get, um, even if you have to go to emergency, get the antibiotics. You really do need to have them. So I have had them, I've had my second dose and I'll be having some more soon. So they come in a, the ones that I've got come in a little plasticky thing oil thing and I'll be having some more later on but if there's no improvement I will be having to go to probably have to go to the emergency to have, get them to have a look at it or one of the um we have like an emergency doctors that you can go to that's like a in between hospital and doctor so I might end up there but I might also just end up at emergency I'm not sure so I'm going to show you my hand now so this is my normal hand and you'll notice that I've got rings on both of my fingers because luckily last night when I got home I remembered to take my rings off because my fingers swelled up and I wouldn't have been able to get them off it actually was a little bit hard to slide them off and then this is my hand so you can see there's a bit of difference there yeah uh it's quite swollen Oh, when I do that, you can really notice. It's quite solid and you can see, I'm just gonna show you there and I've written what time it is. You can see there's the circle that I've done and you can see there's the actual puncture wounds. They look tiny and you could easily dismiss them as being not being a thing, but they will lead to really something a whole lot worse. So that was last night, this is now. And if it's gone further out by the time we get to this evening, then we're gonna have to do something more about it. But what I'm hoping is that my second dose of antibiotics are gonna kick in, and then I'm gonna be okay. So it's hot to touch, it's really hot. You can see how red it is, it's quite red. Put my other hand there for you to contrast and compare. Uh, it's quite red, it's painful. Last night I couldn't move my hand. Now I can, so I'm hoping that that's a sign that it's getting better. There's also the issue of it actually is right on the bony bit on the back of my hand, so it's pretty much right on where it would hurt. It's just If something clamped down on my hand, whether it punctured it or not, it would hurt in that spot. I'm gonna see what happens. I think it'll be a good outcome. I think that the antibiotics will kick in and I'll be fine. But as I said, I have no problem um, with the cat that I don't, uh, there will be you know consequences of whether or not that cat's going to be shown in the future and that will be taken care of by our association and that's a whole thing and different associations have different rules about it um, we like to not decide anything right there and then the cat in question was not able to be shown in the rest of the show and that's everybody I mean I don't think anybody would think that would be unreasonable and then our association will then uh, discuss it and work out what we're going to do going forward but it's um, yeah it's a thing it's a thing if you get bitten by a stud cat if you're bitten by any cat please take it super super seriously please um, know that if you breed cats at some point you're going to get bitten by a cat and don't think that your cats won't do it don't think that your cats are, my cats are so cute they won't do it every stud cat I have right down to my you know my ones that I can carry like a baby um, all of them all of them have the potential to bite me in the right circumstances. All of my cats have the potential to bite me in the right circumstances, but my stud cats especially. So if you're keeping stud cats, if you have male cats, you need to be really, really aware of their behavior. If they start to do that roll thing, if they start to get a little bit amorous, if they start to bunny kick, um, if they start to get a bit grabby and slappy, be really careful because a scratch is one thing and that's going to hurt you and cause you a lot of pain and it might get infected but a bite is particularly nasty because of all that extra bacteria they have in their mouth um, make sure you get antibiotics really quickly and if you can i would talk to your doctor and i would say i breed cats i have stud cats i have concerns that if i do get bitten that i will need to take antibiotics would you be able to write me a script so that i can have it on hand if i need it and I have been able to get that from my doctors. Um, it may or may not be something you can be, you can get depending on where you live, but I would recommend it. And um, yeah, definitely when I, and the other thing I do, I don't know if I should do this or not, but I do, is when I get to the end of the box, I will often keep the last tablet. So if I don't have any on hand, I actually have some, I did actually have some, I've got some new ones, but I actually had some, but I might keep the last one on hand so that if I do get bitten, I have it right there and then I can take it straight away and I'm good to go by the time I get an appointment and get antibiotics, a proper course of them. So that's something you can do as well. So yes, if you get bitten, 
please. I hope it heals up really quick for you and there's no problems. And I hope that's helpful. I don't want you to be scared of your cats. I just want you to be really aware that stud cats are not pet cats. You can, I think I've said this before, you can love them and you can give them you know, all the love and attention and affection that you would give a regular pet cat, absolutely. But they are not pet cats. They have their own set of things that come along with them. They pee on things and sometimes they bite you. So, yeah. If you like this video, I have a lot more on my channel that will be really helpful to you as a new breeder. And stay tuned because I do have an online course coming which will cover everything that I can think of. And I think you'll really enjoy that too. Okay, bye.